Uh, I would just like to take a couple of minutes before we start the session, uh, just to wait for a few people who are just logging in. So please bear with me for a couple of minutes. And uh, until then, perhaps get a glass of water, coffee, or a beer, or whatever you would like to drink, as this session is going to be very interesting. So dear Laika family members, friends and fans, all of us are going through changes in our lives and this is definitely due to the pandemic. And most important during this time is to stay healthy uh, and have a very positive approach to this change. A change also happened in 1924 when Oscar Barnack and Ernst Lights revolutionized the market by making miniature cameras, small compact cameras. And this was available to the mass public for the very first time. For consumers like Oscar Barnack, who found it difficult to travel and take photographs with previously heavy cameras, Leica streamlined the art of photography and made it more accessible. In the history of photography, we have many masterpieces in terms of black and white. If you close your eyes for a moment and imagine all those pictures, such as the Oscar Barnack flood in Wetzlar in 1920, the Henri Cartier-Bresson picture from 1932, where the photo depicts a man who tries to avoid a puddle, Albert Corda with the Che Guerra in 1960, Thomas Hopker with the Muhammad Ali in 1966, Nick Ut with the Napalm Girl in 1972, etc., etc. There is something very, very interesting to monochrome photography, something unique that touches the soul. And all of us feel that too, when we see a color picture or when we see a black and white, there is something which has a little bit of a, a, a nostalgic effect to it. As they say, every great story deserves a sequel, whether it was Rambo or whether it is like a Q2. And this is no exception because the Q2 is a perfect blend of the essentials with the best image quality, innovation, pristine performance, with connectivity and a resilience balanced with elegance. Dear Leica family members and friends and fans, let's welcome the new member of the Leica Q2. It's the Leica Q2 monochrome. This is today's one and only compact camera with a true monochrome full frame sensor delivering outstanding black and white photography and a 4K video with an unparalleled level of natural detail and sharpness in the most accessible way. Let's embrace the soul of photography. Today with us, we have a very, very interesting panel of great qualified, talented people from our company and from our family. So let me start with, with, the, with the furthest people. So today we have Peter Krushevsky, who is the product manager at Leica Camera AG. And uh, he's been with the company for almost 13 years, if I'm not mistaken. And right. he will be responsible for everything which is compact in our company, everything. So uh, uh, indirectly and directly is also related with other projects. But I would say right from, this, from the instant so forth camera till the Leica Q, uh, he's the person, one of the team members, uh, which arranges uh, the, the, the parts of giving us beautiful products. Then we have... Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Peter. <clears throat> then we have uh, a very, very talented lady from Singapore. And she is absolutely multifaceted uh, in photography, does some phenomenal work for big clients such as Vuitton, Gucci, Prada, Cartier. And she's by profession, I would say a professional photographer and, uh, and, and does a lot of concept photography, uh, which is used as content by these very, very talented uh, uh, companies doing a lot of social media work. And Hosanna has, uh, has been our family member also since uh, we launched the Leica SL uh, uh, back then. So she's been with us as a family member too. Hi. We also, hi Hosanna, hi. hi. Looking very nice, Rosanna. 
Thank you. Uh, we have yet another iconic, legendary man, uh, one of the top photographers of Singapore, Ek Beng Chia, but we all, in a nice way, call him ABC. It's not the apple, beetroot, carrot juice, but uh, he thinks a lot of that because he's always on the street doing a lot of street photography, a very talented street photographer, very well known, not only in Singapore, but in Asia. So whether you speak of him in Thailand, Malaysia, India, Philippines, wherever, ABC is a very well-known name and he's, he enjoys and he loves photography. He's also our family member because when I say a family member means they already own Leica products and they use them as well. And last but not least, we have Lucas Schmidt from our team. Uh, hi, Lucas. Hello, everybody. And Lucas has been uh, mm -hmm. responsible for, uh, uh, let me say, mastering all the Leica webinars and the chats and the conversations that we've had. And uh, today, Lucas also helps us in the Leica Singapore team as a, a, a trainer, as a product specialist, and also as a sales consultant. So thank you very much, Lucas. I would pass the, the baton to you to be able to take us through uh, with, the, with the Leica new Q2 monochrome. Okay, Sonia, thank you very much for the introduction and also welcome from my side to everybody. Uh, for those of you who have already joined our previous Zoom meetings, I think you already know the procedure. So whenever you have a question, uh, feel free to um, type them in into the chat box. And then um, this time a little bit different, we will do the Q&A session at the end of the session. So uh, just lean back, enjoy the session, and then uh, we will have a dedicated time at the end where you can ask all the questions to the speakers and the participants that we have today. So then I would like to uh, welcome Peter Kruszewski again. During my, my time in the product management in the headquarter, I was, uh, I was lucky to, to work with him. And as Sunil already mentioned, he's responsible for all the compact cameras in the Leica product portfolio. So as you know, compact camera means everything uh, which has a fixed lens. And he is managing all of these products. And to start the session with, we are not going directly into the into the new product we are, that we are uh, announcing today. So, we will start a little bit with the history of the of the Leica Q system, which is, uh, I would say, a very new uh, baby to the Leica family. So, Peter, first question to you: In 2015, uh, Leica camera announced the Leica Q, and as far as I know. It was such a huge success that nobody expected to be so successful. And my question to you is, what was the procedure to, to get in the idea of such a camera? Do you do usually a lot of market research and then you spot like a um, demand in the market there for such a camera? Or you just say, we are doing it. And then you were lucky enough that it has been so successful. Uh, first of all, hello to everybody <clears throat> from Wetzlar. Nice to meeting you all. Yeah, and thanks, Lucas, coming to the question. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not news or news or um, a secret that uh, compact cameras are under a huge pressure since a couple of years. And this smartphone threat is, is obvious and it's real and cannot be dismissed. And especially compact cameras with a um, yeah, small sensor or a mid or low, low speed lens are really getting suffering at that actually. So, um, yeah, that's a real threat. And so Leica decided not to go that way um, and uh, decided to go a different way here. Because as Leica stands for, for bigger sensors and for high speed and high performance lenses, uh, yeah, the idea was, was born to, to looking for something like a compact camera that holds a really huge um, sensor and high speed lens in a, comp in a compact design. Yeah, the idea was born. Uh, we had lots of meetings, brainstormings and ideas on the table. Uh, it came to a concept and uh, a team was built and worked around this around, I would say, two years mm -hmm. until uh, in June 2015, the Q type 116 saw, saw the day of life, right? So what would you say, what is the characteristics that make the Q so successful? Yeah, it's basically, it's unique. It's unique because it's the first, it's the, it was uh, basically uh, somehow, as far as the performance was concerned, um, state of the art. 
right from the start, this camera performed quite well in the market. The image quality was great. The combination of the 28 millimeter Sumilux lens with full frame sensor in this compact design camera, uh, which I think was the right combination. It's, as I said, it started with the 28 millimeter lens. It was always a question, do we do a 35, do we do a 28? Um, you always have to take a compromise here. Um, but at the end, I think we took the right decision to use and, and shoot for a 28 millimeter lens, which was quite compact together with this huge lenser, uh, a lens and, and, this, um, and this compact design of the camera. What about the- I, I, I also want to just add, Peter is one of the, I would say the man with the golden touch in our company. Because even before the queue, uh, even when we launched a deluxe, uh, we used to outsell, I, I, I just hate to say this, but we used to outsell Panasonic with their LX model. So Peter has this very special hands or, or God's gift that whatever product he touches, we are just selling it like hotcakes, Lucas. So uh, there is something, not only his capabilities, but I think he is blessed with some superpowers that uh, whichever product he touches uh, really goes out of the roof. And we have the only problem that we have with him is that he's not able to supply. I'm so sorry for that. On your supply, supply uh, capability. Uh, last question to this uh, one. Uh, where does the design inspiration come from? Yeah, basically, um, we felt at that time that we should have somehow a touch of an iconic design. Um, like, like the M, for instance. So you see uh, clearly here the iconic touch of an M as a like a Q as well. And this was the first intention not to do something very different from the M, but go a little bit closer to the M design and the iconic touch. And then in terms of design and also the inspiration from the M side, we introduced the QP in 2018. So three years after the, the Q. And I guess, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the aspect here or the concept is similar to the, the MP then. So bringing a camera in that is even more discreet without the Leica logo, for example. So what was that the initial idea of this one? Yeah, quite close to it. I mean, the, uh, by the way, one of my, still my favorite designs uh, for the Q, the, the QP design here. Yeah, it was based on, on the Q type 116 uh, technically. And it was somewhere, I would say, kind of trial, a kind of test balloon for Example, yeah, we, we took off the Leica logo, put on uh, on the top of the camera the Leica Fadenzug. Um, and we used the special paint, a lacquer that comes from Switzerland that we had not used before for a camera like that. So it is a very robust, reliable uh, lacquer with a slightly rougher surface. And yeah, it worked out quite fine because the touch and feel of the camera was very special and it was quite successful at, at the time. And then in 2019, not so a long time ago, we introduced the Leica Q2. And what is very interesting for me here that um, in terms of design, we haven't changed anything, but this one was also super successful. So what, what, what is the reason that um, this is, is, is uh, also so successful as the Leica Q first, if we haven't changed so much here? Yeah, after the Q1, it was a real challenge and a task to, to even get better with the next generation of, of the Q uh, camera here. And it was, it was not so easy because the Q1 was performing so incredibly good in the market. And so we had to find some really added value for the next generation of the Q. And everybody knew that, that uh, just the facelift for the camera would not work, was not an option. And so we here again had lots of ideas, asked lots of our customers what they would wish for the next generation. And then we put every idea together, make priorities, put it on the list. And then we found, I would say, five to 10 features that, where we thought they would be the right one and they would be uh, given added value to the next generation of the Q. For instance, it was the uh, dust and spray waterproofness here for the lens and the body, which took really, really some time and really was a challenge because um, even though the design of the camera uh, was quite the same like the, like the Q1 with some changes on that, but the inner structure of the Q2 had to be completely changed. There was no stone kept on the other uh, because the first priority was as well to keep the dimensions of the camera like it was before and not getting bigger. And this was a quite of a challenge. And 
On top of that, there's a new sensor that we, that we put in, the new EVF, the OLED EVF, which has some real advantages over an LCD panel. Um, and we tweaked a little bit the design. We had this uh, three button operation on the backside instead of the four button operation from the Q1. So yeah, and basically um, in terms of, of the design, there was no need to change so much because it was so well perceived and appreciated by our customers out there in the market that uh, we know that we had to do here and there little changes. For instance, we changed the, um, the on off button. We took the video function away there because it was a little bit tricky. Sometimes you switch them by accident and, and, and. So we changed small things um, from the outer appearance, from the outer design, but um, inside the camera there, there was a real evolution compared to, to the Q1. So would you say the sensor in the compact camera is, is the most important thing, especially when it comes to resolution? Because when you, are, when you have to, to go with only one focal length, then this, this feature, the higher resolution, gives you much more freedom, right? Exactly. Well, the idea was not just putting a sensor with a high res in there. Here we, we were looking for an added value as well. And you see, if, we, if you look onto the digital zoom now, you can go up to 75 millimeters with still 7 megapixels in resolution. So it's still enough, it's still enough flexibility as far as this resolution is concerned, right? I also think that as a customer, one of the key features and the success of this product has been the reliability. So we have been selling the Q system from June 2015, which is almost more than five and a half years now. And I was just checking from our customer care records globally, uh, the return rate or the, 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 the repair rate, I would call it, is 0.7%, uh, which is less than a 1%. So at an average, the industry standard for something like this from other companies would be around 3 to 5%. So uh, one of the really key success factors is the reliability of this camera and the quality of this camera. So I think with a good quality price performance ratio, image, beautiful image capabilities, ease of use, this has just been a fantastic uh, product for Leica camera. Exactly. Okay then, Peter, thank you very much for the, for the little uh, look back on what we already have, but uh, I don't want to torture you guys anymore. So um, now it's time to welcome the new family member of the Q series. And um, I think Peter, you are you are very proud of your new baby that we are going to show you here today. Exactly. I've got one. I'm the lucky one who got the first samples uh, in my hands. So yeah, it's, it's the brand new Q2 monochrome. It's the first of its kind, as Daniel pointed out before. <laughs> and it's the first compact camera with its two monochrome sensor in there. And this camera really delivers an added value in terms of incredible sharpness, natural high sharpness, and rich and clear details uh, of the images. So that, that sounds like even a product manager has to fight to get a, a, a sample unit in the beginning. Not as much as some other people, but yeah, I have to. Okay, then let's have a look first on, on the features that uh, we are getting from the camera. So at a glance, you will run through of us of all the features and then what is new we are going to go a little bit more in detail afterwards exactly at a glance here uh, this camera is based on the 47 megapixel newly developed monochrome sensor uh, we kept the uh, um, 28 mil similar f.1.7 lens here uh, the the oled uh, electronic viewfinder is well known from the system model with the color sensor the iso setting could be extended here for the monochrome from 100 to 100,000. And of course, the, the Q2 monochrome is as fast and as precise as the system model. We have 4K recording as well. Uh, this camera is as well, uh, as far as the lens and the body is concerned, dust and spray water protected based on IP52. We got the three inch touch display, uh, an elegant monochrome design, a little bit uh, more to uh, um, the family idea of an M10 monochrome. We put the Q2 monochrome onto a similar design basis. Of course, we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in the camera and the Leica photo connectivity. Uh, we have the incredible sharpness, not only for still, but as well for video here. And of course, the Q2 monochrome is made in Germany. So then let's talk a little bit about the new heart of the, of the Q2 monochrome. So um, a lot of people say like, why do I, why do I have to take a monochrome uh, camera when I can convert my, my color pictures into black and white? 
So what, what is the difference here when I have a especially monochrome sensor compared to a color sensor? Yeah, exactly. As you said, the, the core of the camera is a newly developed monochrome sensor. It's based on the, on the sensor of the sister model in the automobile brand. You would say it's, it's the, the chassis uh, on, on, uh, on which the newly sensor was developed on. And some people say, okay, just put the color filter away and the glass, and then it's, that's it. But I can, what I can tell you is that much more, it takes much more to develop a, a monochrome sensor for a compact camera like the Q. So it even goes down to the, to the micro lens array that had to be redesigned completely to get the maximum out of the sensor and to avoid or get rid of any reflections like ghost and flare points. So, but taking away the color filter, that's the, that's the great advantage here, means that there is no interpolation to complete the color information needed. And that leads to an even better result and a higher resolution of the sensor. And coming with that, as I said before, the uh, ISO range could be extended from 100 to 100,000 with a higher dynamic range and much less noise, especially under low light conditions. So overall, we can say that an, an Im image from a monochrome sensor here is it's more crisp and lively with detailed highlights, even under high contrast lighting conditions. And I, so, oh, so. Sorry, would it be fair to say it's a totally brand new uh, developed sensor? As I said, it's based on the on the uh, Q2 um, color version sensor, but it's really newly developed. But the basis was taken from the from the, from the system model. But as I said, it's, uh, we took away the color filter. The glass would be taken away. Means there was more light on the on each pixel. We had to readapt and redesign the, the micro lenses array, and so there was some hard work to to get onto the target. So then uh, we haven't talked about that so much in the beginning, um, but I think a lot of people are also very interested in this. Um, let's talk a little bit about the lens itself. I mean, it's, uh, we are still uh, having the, the same lens that has been shown very successful also in the, in the Q and in the Q2. So can you share a little bit about the idea of the lens, why we are going with 28 millimeter? Why is it aperture uh, 1.7 and all of these things? And, what would you say to those people who are um, really crying for other focal lengths? Yeah, first of all, we choose that lens for the Q2 monochrome as well because it's still state of the art as far as the performance and image quality is concerned. Um, and yeah, it's it's still it's still one of the best lenses. It's still a really great combination between the monochrome sensor and the 28 millimeter lens here, and it's. Yeah, and coming back to your question, uh, why why don't we have a 35 millimeter sensor? As I said before, it's always I would say a kind of compromise because if you if you want to go for a 35 millimeter lens, for instance, you will lose speed, and uh, our first priority was to keep the speed of the camera to to stay on at 1.7 and to get not bigger in dimensions, and that's why. This lens here is, is the white one. It harmonizes very well with the, with the new monochrome sensor. And for us, everybody was clear about that should be the lens for this Q monochrome uh, camera here. From my personal view, I wouldn't say it's even a compromise because I think the 28 millimeter offers you the, the most uh, versatility and flexibility in terms of wide angle. and. This is what makes also for me the Q2 so interesting that with 47 megapixel, if you want to have another aspect, you, you can crop. I mean, some people don't like it, but for those who don't mind, I've tested this several times by myself. And even if you crop a lot with 47 megapixel, you have still so much information in the picture that uh, I think the 28 millimeter gives you the most flexibility here, actually. Exactly, and, and based on the new sensor, if you go up to 35 uh, in digital crop, you still have 30 megapixels. If you go up to 50, you still have around 50 megapixels. So there's so much flexibility in there as far as the resolution is concerned. Okay, then we are uh, talking a little bit about the design and the haptics. So in this time, we have used uh, another leather here. So. Why did we go for that letter instead of the letter that we have been previously used on the Q2? Uh, it's not only the leather. It's uh, we tweak this design overall a little bit more. So we, uh, the target was to get closer to 
the design of an M monochrome. And uh, what we did, first of all, we skipped the Leica logo on front, so it's getting a little bit more clearer. We used, as you said, as well, the uh, leverette, a new leverette that has been, has been taken over from the M10 monochrome. Uh, the body and the lens are uh, matte black. Uh, the body is matte black painted. And all the engravings and letterings on the camera are, are kept in, in gray, black, and white. And so I would say in, in a really positive sense, this camera, the Q2 monochrome, is a real understatement. And then one thing that I was quite surprised when we, when we did the preparation for this year is that um, the viewfinder is uh, for black and white photography can be even more important than for color. So what is the reason behind this? Yeah, that's why this, this technology of OLED is really in favor of black and white images uh, because um, it's the rendition of especially dark and black color is, is really good here. And structures even in, in dark scenes and areas can be much better um, seen here if you look through this OLED finder. And another thing is, for instance, if you, if you use focus peaking uh, while, while using manual focusing, then the uh, focus peaking color is really popping out of the monochrome image. and It makes it a little bit more easy uh, to focus here manually. So there's even a real advantage for this existing OLED viewfinder, especially for the Q2 monochrome here. Uh, we don't have a dedicated slide for this one, but um, can you tell a little bit about what has changed in terms of user interface? So the menu, I know that we have a new menu function here. Yeah, exactly. So it's a little bit reduced in menu functions because all those color settings that we have for the system modes are not needed. Uh, it's a little bit reduced like that. And we added a, a toning menu uh, for blue Celine, for blue and Celine, for instance, like we have for the M M10 monochrome. So it's a little bit reduced, but we put some more of the toning in there. And, but for the rest, the menu structure is as, as the Q2. So exactly. those people who already have the Q2, they don't have to learn something new. They can still be comfortable with the menu that they already know. Exactly, they should feel really familiar with this, with the graphic user interface. Okay. Great. And then, Last but not least, uh, very, uh, very most important uh, announcement about the accessories. No new battery, so still, still the same battery as before. But uh, what kind of new accessories we offer? Yeah, first of all, all accessories that fit to the Q2, uh, to the color version, fit to the Q2 monochrome as well. What we did, we will have a new hand grip for the Q2 monochrome. It's more an aesthetical thing because now we, uh, the, uh, the leverette of the hand grip fits to the leverette of the camera. Uh, and then we added some, some filters to the accessories. Like if you like old school photography, then use that filter. We know those colors like orange, yellow, and green from the M10 monochrome and now can be used for the Q2 monochrome as well. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you tell me how does one use these filters uh, really, Peter? Because uh, I mean, I understand it is something to do with light, but uh, uh, you know, we, we, we were, we're not really, I, I just for the, for the benefit of everybody, just throw some light on these filters because I think this is something which is very underrated. It's a fantastic uh, piece of glass that we have, but we are not really exploiting this. Yeah, exactly. So it, 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 as I said, it's a little bit old school photography. If you have a landscape photography, for instance, and use the green, the green filter, uh, the colors are popping a little bit more out. If you go for a sky, for instance, and go for an orange filter or red filter, which is will not be here, but we try to try to launch a red filter as well. If you, if you are taking images from skies, for instance, then it's like more dramatic, you know, it's like a little bit more the old style photography. So every filter has a different kind of application uh, depending on the motive and, and the application of photography that you choose. So Peter, thank you very much so far for your, for your sharing and your introduction to the new camera. Um, I know that uh, Product managers are not allowed to talk about upcoming uh, products in the future. And for everybody who wants to ask, will we have a Q2 with 50 millimeter or whatever, we can already disappoint you. We will not answer this, but maybe let me ask a little bit different. You said in the beginning that the compact camera market um, was and is still under high pressure from the 
on the phone business. So mm. what would you say, what will be the future of the, of the Q system in a couple of years? Where do you see the camera in a couple of years? Well, that's a very good question. I mean, uh, the market is developing very, very fast. And uh, you see, as I said, smartphones are getting better. The image quality of those devices is getting better. So yeah, I would, uh, we still have our assets. We still have great lenses. We still have, uh, like with the Q here, wonderful camera. There is still room, I would say, to, to improve, to make things better and to implement, let's say, features. Uh, let's think about uh, computational imaging, for instance, might be an idea that can um, really bring an added value for future products here and especially for the, for the Q family. So this will be implemented in the Q3? So as you said, we are not allowed to talk about future projects. So, sure. uh, I have to try, I have to try at least once. Okay, Peter, thank you very much. Uh, you are still with us uh, until the end. So whoever I think, wants to ask. I think one thing that you need to improve is the supply, Peter. Please improve the supply. Yeah. Okay, understood. I will give my best. So as I said, Peter will be with us until the end. So in case you want to ask any questions, um, he will not go away. But for now, we are going on with our first user experience sharing. So therefore, I would also like to welcome Hosanna Sui. Um, Hosanna, you were uh, one of the two lucky ones that were allowed to have the first hand on the Q2 monochrome. So before we have a look into your pictures, how was it in one sentence? How was it? Seamless. Because I am a Q2 a user myself, so I've been using Q2 for a while now. And I love how the Q2 is very versatile for all genres of photography, be it like landscape or portraiture or even still life actually. It does great macro photography. I think many people overlook that part that Q2 is predominantly for street and uh, photojournalism, but they tend to forget, forget that part that is, it can be very great for portraiture as well and macro photography. That's mm -hmm. a, a very good starting point to have a first look on the, on the picture. So um, a lot of people would not say that the Q2 is the camera for portraiture, but you proved them wrong. Yeah. So for this, so why do I introduce myself first? So I am a creative director by profession and predominantly my works focuses a lot on fashion, portraiture and conceptual works. So what I love about the Leica Q2 monochrome is that it is highly intuitive and it strips away the excess, allowing you to focus on the essentials of photography, not and not let you get distracted. Because sometimes when you look like, like a normal camera, it actually strips away. So it just has the fundamentals of what you need to focus on shooting, allowing you to focus on bring out the essence of your subject. That's what I love about the Q2 actually. Rosanna, you talk like one of our sales consultants. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a salesperson. I actually own the Q2. Yes. No, but thank you very much. Yes. This, this is great very feedback and very mm -hmm. genuine. Yeah. Actually, so, the, the, the customers, actually, they can be the best sales consultants because what, what they tell is pure passion and is their, their honest mm -hmm. opinion. So really great to hear that from you. Mm -hmm. have, you have you done black and white um, before? So have you converted your uh, color pictures to black and white? And if you would compare it with the results from the Q2 monochrome, what would be your, um, your result? I think it's actually quite different because I did a comparison and the Q2 monochrome <laughs> actually renders sharper and more brilliant details as compared to the Q2, the normal one. Mm. And it performs very well under low light settings as well. And in terms of portrait, portrait um, I, I, need, I need to ask again, why, why uh, you say like 28 millimeter is the, the focal length that you can use for, for portrait? Actually, for the Q2, because I predominantly, predominantly I shoot a lot with prime lenses, so actually the digital cropping function actually works very well for me. But at the same time, it does not lose out on that detail, despite cropping it, because of its high resolution. That's what I love about it. Mm. And uh, these kind of pictures, um, 
are they made in the studio? So did you use, yes. for example, a flash and, and uh, how, how did the tube to go along with the flash? Yes, we use a pro photo lighting system. So I use a softbox for this. Two lights actually, both at the sides. One soft box, one strip box. So actually it does perform under uh, pseudo lighting very well actually. I think you can't really see the details, but if you go to my profile and you zoom into the picture, the real picture, you can actually see right to the strands and the, what's that called? The pores of the skin. Mm. That's how sharp it is. I mean, for sure that the Zoom platform <laughs> is, is not the right one to really, um, yeah. really judge about the, the picture itself, but uh, we are only going to show a couple of pictures from you and mm. um, if you really want to to zoom in i already did that by myself and i oh, did that zoom that picture is already uh, also very suitable for this because already here on that area for the hairs yes uh, you can already see like almost every single hair that's amazing yeah it's amazing mm. and then your last portrait so this is um is this made in the in the macro mode and how do you usually do it when you when you take very close up pictures yes this is i think this was photo was done in the macro mode we have to switch it to the macro function mode right mm -hmm. and i can go really really close that's why if you zoom into this picture you can actually see the tail the tail detail the water droplet mm. what is the uh, what is the setup for this picture i'm i'm curious because i cannot explain it by myself how did you create that shot what is there is a mirror at the bottom of the model. Uh -huh. So it's actually peeking from the back. So we pour a bit of water and then before we get the shot, we take our fingertip to create the ripple. How do you get to those ideas? Oh. So for that, we have to pay Hosanna money. So then she will share the ideas. <laughs> I always expose to myself to, because I like photography. So I, I expose myself a lot to concepts and how other photographers shoot. And this is a perfect, opportunity to express that Absolutely. yeah so it's fine. Mm. very nice very nice concept very nice setting yeah. mm. very very beautiful work done hosanna mm -hmm. thank you so thank much you. really thank you yeah yeah so this uh this editorial focuses a lot on the use of reflections and silhouettes and long exposure shots i don't think the long exposure shot is here actually yeah there's one yeah, I mean, we have uh, submitted a lot of pictures yes. because of the limited timing today. Mm -hmm. uh, we have only selected for the um, for the user experience session a couple of photos from you and from uh, Ike Beng. But um, whoever wants to see the full collection, they can visit you on, on Instagram, right? And on your on your homepage that you mentioned. Correct. Yeah. So to this editorial, because Q2's core is photojournalism, and it makes the perfect uh, companion for street photography. But I decided to challenge that notion and ph photograph what I love best, which is fashion portraiture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. And then your last two pictures. Um, mm -hmm. what, is, what is the story about uh, this one? So, so collectively, uh, if you look at it in a series, I believe that it summarizes uh, 2020 in a whole. It, to me, 2020 feels like a year in transition where it is a space marked with mystery and intrigue. So this essay actually explores dreamscapes because to me, monochromatic images is uh, meditative. It helps you to, it's the act of such uh, reduction and then it focuses on, on the core emotion of your subject. And to me, monochromatic images are not boring, but actually they are very emotive and intriguing and make me think of a alternative universe, which reflects in these images. Mm. I, I, re I really like this one. It look, looks yes. like a painting. They're so oh, sweet. Shot, shot in botanical gardens. It was a very gloomy day, actually. Yeah, this one was shot in botanical gardens. And then the, the last one, I have to say, um, I, I think uh, flowers are one of the most popular motives for, for all photographers, but yes. I always assume the main reason is because of the color. And you prove us here that uh, you can also shoot a color in uh, a flower in black and white and it still look impressive. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
I always like orchids because they are very sophisticated and I always like its form because it's very sculptural and white brings out that purity yeah in the image um, did you do some processing on the pictures did I do some not much actually mainly just uh, uh, editing away the flaws <laughs> a bit <laughs> so you would say the as the pictures comes out from the camera they are already yeah, lighting wise, I know nothing much. Just bump up the contrast and such. Other than that, is good as what you see is what you get. That's mm -hmm. yeah, really. Good. I think what uh, the Q two is very good is with is capturing light and shadows. I believe I being Cha is a testament to that. Hmm. Okay, Osana, thank you very much thank for your you. your short um introduction to the pictures that uh, you have been taking with the Q2 and I think there's a lot more to see on, on your Instagram or on your homepage. Yes. And our second guest for the user wow. today <laughs> is um, Aik Peng Chia, um, already announced by Sunil. But um, Aik Peng, I want you to introduce yourself again um, because of the story that you have been shooting with the with the Leica Q2 monochrome. I think that's very interesting for our users to, to know about the story behind the, uh, behind your pictures. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sunil, for the introduction. And uh, thank you, Leica Singapore, for having me aboard. It's been a while. Yeah, so uh, I have a queue. And I remember last year when Q2 was launched, uh, I was blown away by the everything. So, and again, now is the monochrome. So a bit about myself. Uh, I do a lot of uh, genre like street photography, street portrait and uh, stills and all that. And my favorite is usually black and white because uh, I have the, I'm being blessed by able to see things in color and at the same time in black and white. So when this uh, new Q2 monochrome came, I, I went crazy because uh, it's always my dream to have a monochrome, a pure monochrome, because in the past, I always convert colors to black and white. So what better way given the time was to, I went to document one of the dying trade in Singapore. So I felt that it really works perfectly because uh, I went to find this guy, Mr. Lai. I started photographing him back in 2015. And what I, why I want to bring the Q2 to there was because the place is actually, in terms of the lighting condition is very bad. So having the Q2 monochrome with everything you know, on it. It really brings out the detail and the highlights and everything as you can see from here. So, yeah, so I decided to pick it up for a spin and, and tell the story about Mr. Lai. He's one of the last two remaining paper offering craftsmen. Uh, in local context, we call it Kim Sua, you know. So, Right now, because time has changed, uh, you hardly see all these craftsmen around. Uh, most of them, they are all imported from China and everything. So I thought it was good to bring this Q2 monochrome to document this place. As you can see from here, it's very dark. So I play with the light, natural light most of the time. I see where the light is coming from, which is from the outside. As you can see from behind the paper house, is everything very dark? Yeah. <clears throat> when you when you shoot, I, I assume that uh, that uh, object that we see over there is quite colorful. So, what was the reason you decided that monochrome is is the right choice to to shoot here and basically not having the colors here? Uh, somehow I always drawn to monochrome. Uh, I mean, as in black and white because. Black and white, somehow I feel it can't eliminate all the distraction. And it, it makes you focus into what you want to share with the audience. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's the reason why I love black and white. Instead of, uh, even though I photograph in colors. Yeah. And also, I like 28. I, since day one, 
when I started picking up photography, I always love wide angle. And having the Q with the 28mm is perfect for me. And, and I always love to use it on portrait because I always feel that it really, not only it brings up the subject, but it also gives you a wider sense, a feel of the things surrounded by the subject. Like you can see from this uh, image. So would you say that the Q is as versatile as you need it for everything that you that you are doing? So street photography, scenery photography, and portraits like this? Yes. So that's why I got the Q for myself. It's like, I, whatever I want to photograph is, is there. Mm -hmm. I don't have to switch lens. I'm lazy. I hate to switch lens. So I, I love fixed lens. And I love the focal point. And obviously, the 28 mm time to change the q to the q2 monochrome abc no? <laughs> yes of course if i strike lottery <laughs> no, with, the, with the talent that you have you are doing very well bless you and uh, yeah God, hope you make more money and spend it with us yes <laughs> yeah. so i assume that you previously also shot uh, the color pictures or you uh, converted the color pictures from the Q2 into black and white. Yeah. Share with us what, what difference do you see in terms of sharpness and, and contrast and all of these things when you compare the Q2 monochrome with the converted color uh, black and white color pictures? Uh, I will say, okay, I, I'm bad at expressing it in words, but somehow I feel that uh, having using the monochrome uh, direct, right? There's, there's this feel to it, which I can't explain uh, because like in a, when Q2 was launched, I shot and then I convert into black and white. Mm -hmm. Somehow I felt something is missing, you know, but with this uh, Q2 monochrome, that, that missing part kind of like wasn't there. And the beauty of it is uh, I don't have to post process or you know a lot compared to colors colors have to convert then i have to adjust the highlight I have to adjust the contrast the shadows everything but with this q2 monochrome that i i had a chance to play with the only thing that i did was i just like what hosan uh Hosi say i just bump up the contrast and that's it mm -hmm. i didn't even have to adjust the highlight or the shadows you know, and, and to me, like I said, I'm, I'm very lazy. I don't like to spend so much time trying to, to adjust everything post-process. So this monochrome, I only just need to do one, one thing. I just need to bump up the contrast to my liking and that's it. Mm. And everything is there, you know. Very good. You, you save some, some work time there. Yeah, I save work time because it, it's very important because to me, if, if any image that I have to spend like more than a minute or what, I, I, I wouldn't want to do it, you know? So, yeah. For, for everybody here, uh, if you have a question to Ike Bang, um, you can ask them now because he has to leave us soon. So I will, I will ask those questions to you first. And we already have one from Edith. Uh, and she's asking, did you use any other light source here or is that the pure natural light in the scenery? Okay, like I said, uh, it's all natural light. And this place, if you go down on your own, you can see it's actually very dark. So I do have a shot where he shared with me where he, he sleep. It's very dark, you know, but yet somehow the monochrome was able to manage to bring out the, uh, the details and everything. So his bedroom is behind the clock. As you can see, that area is already very dark. You know, yeah. So all these were shot uh, without any aid of a uh, third party like source or what. Everything was all natural light. So I based on where the light is coming from and I'll just frame it accordingly. Yeah. And then we have one question from uh, Mohamed and he's asking, did you crop the portrait shot that we, that we have seen previously? Oh, no. So because like I said, I'm so used to doing it and and all I did was I just moved backwards if I want an even wider shot and then or I just moved to a comfort zone that I 
I like it. So there's no cropping involved. I didn't even like crop to 35 or 50 or 75, that kind. It was purely 38. Yeah. And then another question from uh, Vinit Vora. He's asking portraits in color or monochrome and why? Okay. To me, very simple. If the portrait brings out the character in colors, why kill it? Why kill the colors? But if the portrait in black and white draws you in, why not? You know, so I mean, really, like, like I said, I see in colors and I see in black and white. So certain things I will let it go as color, but there's always this beauty and this love about black and white that you're very drawn to it, especially when it comes to still life, portrait, and even landscape. Thank you, Vinit Vora, for joining. A pleasure to have you also on the on on the seminar here. And this question was really funny because one very very talented street photographer is asking the other talented street photographer, <laughs> and I find it quite interesting <laughs> when two kings are going uh, to war with each other. You know, so good question and a very good answer. Though I didn't understand which was better, but it was a very diplomatic answer. Uh, so, uh, like you said, yeah, each to their own. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Vineet. Uh, thank you. Yeah. And <clears throat> there's one question from Jojo, and mm. uh, I, I think I will ask you this question also because you have mm. used the camera by yourself. Um, how's your experience when it comes to high ISO? Have you used the uh, Qtone Monochrome in very high ISO range, and how was the performance? Okay, uh, I don't mess with that. Uh, because I'm not technically inclined. So most of the time, I, my ISO is set at auto. So I just leave the camera do the work. Mm. Like I said, I'm a very lazy photographer. <laughs> yeah. So all this that you have seen, uh, it was all shot in auto mode. So, and it helps me because it will help those who are very new to photography. Mm. You know, so having the auto mode being on all the time, you, you don't have to worry about changing the ISO or the whatever. So it works for me because I'm an idiot. You know, I, I don't know how to use manual mode and all that. So everything that you see is all shot on auto and I just need to focus on composition and my subject and in what I want to capture, that's all. So I like it simple, you know, keep it simple. Well, I would say you represent ABC, a very, very large population of people who are exactly like you. They don't want to get into the technical stuff. Yeah. When you pay so much money, then you want mm. that thing to do the job for you as well. So, yeah. uh, and uh, yes, there are professional people who are mm. losing to shoot manual each to their own. But yeah, like you correct. said, you're not any idiot. You're a fantastic photographer and you represent a very large population mm. of people who are exactly like you. So once again, thank, thank you. you for being honest and transparent. Thank you, Sunil. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing. It was a very authentic and, and honest, um, honest sharing from you. And as you have to leave now, um, yeah. and then I already say thank you very much for, for joining us. And yeah. uh, for the last part of our session today, we are going into the Q&A session. So, yeah. I'm coming back to the question earlier from Jojo and I will forward this question to Peter. So how is the ISO performance of the Q2 monochrome in very high ISO range? So of course we made some tests around the ISO performance of the Q2 monochrome compared with the Q2 system model and, 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 and what I can tell you is if you have the chance to grab a camera and put this camera on, I on ISO 6400, for instance, you can barely see any noise. So the ISO performance is great. And even if, if um, you don't use usually 50,000 or 100,000 ISO, but here with that camera, you know that you have the flexibility to do so because we took some images with ISO 100,000. Of course, you have some grain in there. It's, it's of course natural here, but um, all other cameras would have been taken away in some very low light conditions, but you can still take the Q2 monochrome and take images here with some grain, but it's, it's still great. So the ISO performance is really, really outstanding for the Q2 monochrome. And the best way to test it is go to the store. Most Leica stores would have a sample of the Q2 monochrome. 
If they don't, it's on the way. And uh, if the, the shipments are just on the way. Fix an appointment with the Leica store owners and test drive it with immediate effect. And Nusena, may I ask you the same question? Have you tried the q monochrome in higher ISO? I actually did try the Q2, but not the monochrome, but in low light. It actually performs quite well if you have a light source. Okay. Yeah. I also had the... I went up to 3.2, 3.2.0, and there's no noise. Yeah, it's like, it actually does quite well. So I also had a conversation with a, with a German photographer that mm. had the opportunity to test it already. And he yeah. said, that, as Peter mentioned, you, you can actually go up to 100,000. And I mean, some people don't like it, but, but it shows that it's possible even to shoot on the, on the maximum ISO. Mm. <clears throat> then we had uh, one question very early um, about the sensor. I think we already talked about that, but um, just to, to make it clear, Peter, the question was, it's, is it a newly developed sensor? Um, yes, as I said before, we used the, the chassis of the sensor of the Q2 system model, but um, lots of things in here, like the micro lens array, have to be redesigned and redeveloped. So there is a basis uh, and sensor here, but there was, a, and that's why it shows it took around two years uh, or 18 months until we have that baby on the table here. So it took some time. So it was basically a new development. This is based on the chassis of an existing sensor. Then we have one question from Paul and he's asking, is the viewfinder only monochrome? And do you take, uh, do you get what you see through the viewfinder? Yeah, exactly. You, it, it's not only monochrome, uh, it's, it's, it's technically uh, because coming the, the image is one by one, uh, 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 getting through the OLED viewfinder, so you really get what you see here. Okay, then just let me check in between if we have some other. Uh, lots of uh, greetings to uh, to Hosanna and to ABC from their fans. Um, you know, I think later on we'll pass these messages to you, but uh, yeah, I was just seeing the text. Yeah, you have fans everywhere, Jose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. So, Peter, then I have one question to you. Um, I mean, we, we, we shouldn't talk about what the, the camera cannot do, but I think it's very interesting to understand. So, uh, face or tr no, sorry, tracking is not possible with the camera. And please explain us the reason why it is, because it's very interesting to understand that. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, I had this question lots of times so far. Yeah, of course, face detection is possible because the camera X is uh, looking for the eye and the face itself. The tracking itself, if you want to track a motive or, or an object, it's not possible because for this feature, you need color information from the sensor. And because this is a black and white sensor and monochrome sensor, you don't have the color information, so you don't have tracking. So it's physically not, not uh, possible. here. Okay, great. Then we have one question from David and he's asking, uh, is the result, um, if you would take an M10 monochrome with a 24 millimeter Sumilax, comparable to the Q2 monochrome, or should you not compare M10 monochrome and Q2 monochrome? I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. I mean, quality wise, I would say, if you look on the images, uh, both show a very, very high performance and quality um, as far as resolution and sharpness and details are concerned. But um, I would say, if you ask me personally, uh, there is a somehow a slightly different look between between those uh, both images. If you take one by the Q2 monochrome or the M10 monochrome, but uh, they are slightly they're basically they are on the same level. I would say it's almost like going to a Michelin star restaurant, and one is a three star restaurant and one is a one star restaurant. So both are Michelin stars, but uh, I think. Uh, when you use the lenses that are handcrafted in Leica Germany, obviously the results would be totally different compared to a Q2 fixed lens, which has some level of uh, machines involved. So, exactly. uh, but both are image quality is fantastic. And I, like I said, both are Michelin star. One has three and one has one. The question is which has three, right? <laughs> I think That's we leave something. it to the users <laughs> and let them decide. Exactly. 
Okay, then, if um, there are no... Oh, sorry, there's another question incoming. Mm. For the Qtor monochrome, Peter, um, is it already native supported in Lightroom with DNG, Ross? Yeah, it is. It's already implemented. Uh, all profiles are there, so it shouldn't be a problem. Everything is ready here. Okay, great. Then for the end, I think we are coming back to the, to the supply issue. So Peter, if we promise you that we will take a lot of, offer, uh, lot of orders today, you promise us that you will prefer Singapore when it comes to uh, delivery. Is that a deal or? I don't think oh. you will make that deal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will give my best to serve uh, as good as I can your, your, your place. Yeah. Okay, okay. Then <clears throat> Peter, Rosanna, and uh, also Ike Bang. I don't know if he's uh, still here, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for joining us today in, in those sessions. And um, I think we, we did a very well balance between product feature history and also user experience, which is, in my opinion, always the most important part. Because mm -hmm. as I said, getting the information from a, from a user, from a customer is 100% authentic. And I think what we have heard today from all of you is very amazing, was very interesting also to have a look on the on the insights, um, on the ideas behind that. And thank you very much for, for joining us today. And also thank you very much to everybody um, mm -hmm. who has uh, joined us today to, to get to know the Q2 Monochrome. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. And um, as Sunil already mentioned, the Q2 Monochrome uh, will be available in most of the Leica stores also for demo. If you want to have a look on it, if you want to get it in your hand by yourself, come down to the store, test it, bring your SD card, make some pictures and review it afterwards. And then you will see it's fantastic. Along with the SD card, please bring your credit card as well, because that would be very helpful. <laughs> no, thank I you very much. Very, very nice gentlemen. final sentence. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank no, you. I, I also, I think just from a price point of view, it's uh, it's priced at 5,600 euro in Germany, which is the retail price and equivalent in every marketplace. So uh, just multiply 5,600 roughly into your local currency. That's what is the price of the camera from the Leica store. And uh, uh, of course, it's slightly a little bit expensive than the current Q2. Uh, that's simply because there's a lot of uh, R&D gone in, in, into it. And, uh, and that extra is not going to our pockets, but to various suppliers as well. Mm. So on that note, uh, once again, family members, friends and fans, thank you very much, Peter. Special thank you and a hug to you. Thank Hope you. to see you soon. Stay safe, everybody. All my best. Make appointments with the store before you visit uh, so that we are in line with the regulations that are set for COVID in each country. Thanks a lot and all my best to you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.